Because the Spirit of God is guiding me to talk to you. See, many have forgotten in their lives that, um, uh, let me give you, let me give you some words for comparison. Think about process versus product. It's not supposed to be a versus, you see. But here is where many have found themselves today. They're carried away by the process. So much so they've forgotten the product. They're carried away by the work. And they have forgotten their objective. They're working. Do you realize a lot of people who go to work today, they've forgotten the objective. They just work. They got to work. They got to work. What's the objective? It's no longer part of their consciousness. It's like being on a journey, but you no longer remember the destination. You are carried away by the activities of the journey, all the beautiful things in the journey. So much so, you're no longer conscious of the destination. So many distractions and attractions on the way of the journey that you lost sense of the destination. Same thing with ministry. Many are in ministry, but they have forgotten their mission. So they're carrying out ministry. And this was happening before COVID. And that's one of the reasons. I told you, one of the reasons that COVID came and took many by surprise. Because there were ministry. But there was no more mission. They have forgotten their mission. Why are you here? Why do you live? What are you doing here? What's your purpose? Why were you born? Why are you in ministry? What is this ministry? Do you realize it's a journey with a destination? You know, we're carried away, fascinated by the process, the work, the attractions of the journey. Forgetting or neglecting or losing focus on the product, the objective, and destination. You've lost yourself. What makes the journey? What while? What makes the process? What while? What makes the work? What while? What makes the ministry? What while? It's the destination, the product, the objective, the mission. And if you don't know the purpose, Of the church. If you don't know the mission and purpose of the church. What are you doing? And sadly. Many have long forgotten. That there was a mission. They've long forgotten. They've long forgotten. They've long forgotten. In Second Corinthians chapter one.
I'm reading from verse 8. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure above strength, in so much that we despaired even of life. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raised the dead. You know, only when you understand your mission that you can have an attitude like this. Only when you understand your mission. Only when you know your destination can you undertake a dangerous journey. And you're told that this journey may cost your life. And you say, I got to do it. Because your focus is on the destination. If you're carrying out ministry without a focus on the mission, without a consciousness of the mission, you may be enjoying it, but you're going nowhere. It's not worthwhile. We have to live like people who have a destination, who have a purpose, who have a mission. We have a mission. So the question is, can we define that mission? Can we define it? And it's so important that we define it. And each one of us should become conscious of our mission. And I tell you something. If you become conscious of your mission, in fact, you have to know it first. If you get to know it and you're conscious of it and you live for it, Nothing on this earth can shake you. Nothing. Because your mind is on your purpose. Your mind is on your mission. And suddenly, this world doesn't matter so much to you. The things of this earth have no value to you. They don't get your attention. Because you have a focus. You understand that this is just a journey. So you're no longer pained by the things that happened to you. Oh, someone didn't like you. Somebody said something against you. Somebody did something to you. Something happened. All of those things don't matter to you anymore. Why? Because this is just the journey. And all of these attractions and distractions don't matter to you anymore. You see it? Because you are headed somewhere. You're headed somewhere. You know your mission. And when you accomplish it, you know. Listen to Paul saying, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I've kept the faith. For a good fight. I finished my course. So he knew his course. So he was on course. He knew when he was on course. And whatever happened to him, that's why he says we had the sentence of death in our ears. He was on a journey. He says, I'm not shadow boxing. He understood he was running a race. He was headed somewhere. So my brothers and sisters in Christ, don't be carried away by the attractions and distractions of the journey. Have your focus on the destination. 
Have your focus on the destination. Don't let the things that happen along the way distract you from finishing your course. Set your mind on the destination, on the mission. Set your mind on it, on the objective. So we're going to look into what the Word tells us and get ourselves walking on course, fulfilling our purpose. I tell you, that's where the real joy is. It's not in the attractions or the distractions of the journey. Uh-uh. The real joy. It's like, just, like Jesus, the Bible says, For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. He despised the shame. You see, he had his focus on the joy that was set before him. The end of the journey. The reason for undertaking all of that project. The salvation project. He set his mind on the end of it. And because of that, he endured the shame. He despised the shame. It didn't matter what the pain was. It didn't matter what they called him. It didn't matter what that crown of thorns they put on his head with blood coming out. The pains from those nails. No. He was thinking about the end. So he endured the cross. The Bible says that's what carried him. He set his mind on the joy. If I can just go through this thing. And he was thinking just a few more hours. Just a few more hours. It's a few more hours. I'm going to be here. The pain was excruciating. It was killing him. But he was going to be there. He endured the cross. Despised the shame. They said, look at you. Look at you. You that everybody respected so much. You. The Bible says he despised the shame. He didn't care. He didn't care. He knew very soon it'll all be done. All be over. And that's what I'm saying to you. If you can have your mind, your focus on the end of this journey, it won't matter what happens along the way. Count it all joy when you go to divers' tests. Count it all joy. That's what you're going to be saying. It's all joy. No matter what happens. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. That's what we have to do. That's the way. In these last days, that's what we better do. That's what the Spirit of God will expect of us. And that's why I'm going to be sharing these things with you during the week. You are going to so, be so blessed and inspired instead. It will look like you just become a Christian, I'm telling you. The joy of the Holy Ghost in your life. Hallelujah. Just go ahead and talk to the Lord by yourself. Give Him praise and honor for the power of His Word. Never received salvation. If you've never received Christ into your heart, if you've never experienced this life of Christ that I'm talking to you about, this is your moment. Say these words. Say, O oh Lord God, I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I believe He died to save me. I believe God raised him from the dead and he's alive today. I confess with my mouth Jesus Christ is Lord of my life from this day. And by my faith in him I receive eternal life into my heart, into my spirit. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. I have eternal life now. I'm a child of God now. 
I am born again. Thank you, Lord. If you just said that prayer along with Pastor Chris, congratulations. Welcome to the family of God.